Hello, this is Vampire. Thank you for joining me today again. Um, this one is going to be a little bit special. What we're going to focus here today is what I call animal instincts. Okay, so our journey begins with scenario training. So this is all about the mental side of self-defense. Okay, so just imagine, suppose you're walking over to your car and you see some suspicious people in the way. You're aware of the possible danger. So the next step is to get ready. Hopefully, nothing happens. And the reality is, there is a big chance that nothing will happen. But it doesn't hurt to be ready. In fact, if you're not ready and something does happen, you're totally screwed. So in my opinion, this means that you basically don't have a choice. You need to be ready. Now, to get psychologically ready for combat, we have something called triggers. It triggers to call on our animal instincts. I call it animal instincts instead of killer instincts because our goal, like any animal, is to survive. Having negative thoughts about killing and hurting people to me is psychologically unhealthy. So we don't use those kinds of thoughts in our training. Your first trigger should be something like a lion killing a gazelle. This should put you in the mindset of being the predator rather than prey. So just, just imagine one of those clips from the Discovery Channel where from at, at a distance, right, you see this lion running after this gazelle that's running for his life and then he jumps him. So it's all happening at a distance, okay? So that's your first trigger, your first mental image, okay? The second trigger needs to be something a bit more zoomed in, a bit more close up, like a great white shark chomping on bait. This should get you more ready, even if the confrontation is up close and personal. It's like right in your face, the guy's, you know, saying these nasty things to you or whatever. You know, this, this is going to help you deal with that, all right? The third trigger needs to be a discreet physical action, like tensing up your shoulders. For me, I like to use the silent growl. So... Let's make it physical. This final trigger should link your mind and body with the right attitude for fighting. The reason why we have three triggers is so we can properly get ready. So this all happens as you're walking towards the car. So this is before you get attacked, before the person starts being hostile towards you, okay? Now think about it. If we only had one trigger, that means it's like a light switch. You go from A to B immediately. You go from normal to fighting mode just in that fast, just with one trigger, all right? Well, that means that you have to be constantly on edge to go from normal to fighting so quickly. And that is definitely not mentally healthy. So think about like your war veterans, okay? Post-war syndrome. These people that come back from that. that that's what happened to them essentially, okay? They, they have this light switch on and it's just one trigger basically. Just one small thing triggers them into combat mode. That's dangerous and, and like I said, that's not mentally healthy. So that's why I'm going into three triggers. Okay, if you have more than three, like you have 10 triggers. Now, the, on the flip side, the problem is if you have too many, then it's taking way too long for you to get ready. So you may not be able to go access your combat mode in time. So to me, three is a good number. After you have initiated all three triggers, you should be psyched up for combat, totally psyched up. The next step is to acclimatize yourself by hyperventilating. Okay, so think about it. You're in an intense 
mindset, all right? Now, your mind is intense and, and your body is tense now, but you have to become part of it. And to, to, to truly become part of it, you have to involve your breathing. Okay, so we hyperventilate on purpose, on purpose. Or if you naturally are hyperventilating, okay, then you know that you're supposed to be. So that's a good thing. So this action helps you accept that what you're about to do is very intense. If you're too relaxed, your reactions may be too slow. And before you know it, either you're fighting out of a really bad situation, like you let it become that bad because you, you were just way too relaxed, or it's gonna be over. You're, you're gonna be run over, all right? So once you're hyperventilating, you want to slowly manage this breathing so you can calm down and not wear yourself out. Controlling your breath is important so you don't get too much of an adrenaline dump too quickly, which may cause you to freeze up and not be able to take action. What I'm showing you basically is I'm taking you through the full circle from calm to getting this adrenaline and then going back to calm. Now this going back to calm is not the same as the beginning calm. Even though they're both very calm, it's not the same. And that's what's really, really important here. Okay. So like I said, if you have a person that's just already calm and then the fight starts, you know, some fighters say, I need, I need to wake up in the fight. I need to wake up. I need to get a hit, take a hit first. But in the street, you may not be able to afford that. Even, even if you're a cage fighter or a kickboxer, yeah, you may not be able to afford that. Okay. You need to already be awake. All right. Because if the guy is a very hard hitter or something and he hits you that first move and you just get knocked out, that's how that happens in some of these fights you see in the sport and stuff. Okay, the, the guy, he just, he just was not awake, all right? He was too calm, too relaxed. So you need to be friends with this nervousness, all right? And once you accept it, once you're able to control it a little bit, all right, then you start to become calm again. And once again, this second calmness is not the same as just someone that just woke up or something, okay? Someone that is just not all there, okay? So that's totally different. Now this is, you are now in the zone, so to speak, all right? So that's, that is what we're looking for. All right, so when you switch on your animal instinct, your attitude changes, you're confident, you're determined, aggressive, and you exude danger. This tells the bad guys to go pick another target. So if you do this exercise and you practice this on a daily basis, this, this is something that you could do just by walking in the mall or something, okay? Um, just walking around at the grocery store, okay? And just imagine certain people, you might see certain people that you know, you don't know them or anything, but they might look like they could be formidable or whatever. A practice with those people, okay? Just start getting yourself all ready and imagine, oh, this person wants to jump me, okay? And then get, feel your body tense up, feel your hyperventilating, get, get all that ready and then relax and calm down and let it go. So it's great practice for you to do in a real life scenario you're actually doing this in public all right now most people are just busy doing their own thing so they're they're you know they might just think of you as oh it looks like he's just having a bad day or something so they'll probably ignore you and stuff okay this is not about looking for trouble or going to pick fights. That's not what this exercise is about. So it's just a real personal inside. All this takes place inside your mind. So this is a self exercise that you do in public, in, in real life public. So that makes it very, very realistic. Okay. So this, this is super important that you actually practice this out there in the real world. 